Good morning, welcome to Fairy and Spoil. Today I'm going to talk about the importance of a dog routine and how a dog routine can keep a dog calm and settled. I'm such a believer in routine for dogs. Um, I've always had a you know real strict routine with all of my dogs over the years and it definitely makes them calm and settled because they know what's going to happen in their day. You imagine if you didn't have a clue what was happening in your, in your day, somebody else was in charge of your day. They were in charge of whether you got fed, whether you got let to go to the bathroom, and you had no clue when these things were happening or if they were happening. It would be very worrying, and it's exactly the same for the do for dogs. Dogs live in a survival state, so knowing when their meal is coming, knowing that they're going to be allowed to go out to the toilet, things like that are really important to a dog. And if they don't know for sure that that stuff is going to happen or when it's going to happen, it will make a dog anxious. And so my dogs know exactly what time they get fed, when they get walked. They know all their routine. So yesterday I filmed my whole day all the way through the day. Not the, Well, I didn't, you know, you'll get snippets of it, but you will see what my routine is. Now, I'm not saying that you do my routine. I'm not saying my routine is the best for me. Um, and you would have to do a routine that would be best for you. And you will benefit from it as much as your dogs because you'll know where you are. You won't forget to do things. Your dogs will be so much happier and so much calmer because of it. So Monday to Friday, my week is, it doesn't change. It is what it is. It's always the same. At the weekends, um, it does change because we do things, we go out, people come around, stuff like that. So, but the things I never change, so their walking time could change because we, we take them all over the place for walking. Um, obviously, I don't work at, well, I don't work at the weekend, so that doesn't happen. But the things that never change is they are fed at exactly the same times at the weekends, no matter where we're going, what we're doing, what's happening. I like them to have a bit of a change at the weekend because I think during the week it can get a little bit boring for them because it is such a same routine um, because, you know, because I work and stuff like that. So um, at the weekends, things do change, but I keep their meals at exactly the same time. Um, I name what stage of day I'm at. The reason I do that is because my other little dog, let me find him for you over here, my little Albert, he has um, learning difficulties. It's, it's a type of autism that he has. And so just with people who have autism, routine is everything. It's, he, he thrives on a routine. And so what I do is I name the different stages of the day. So And I say to him, oh, should we, you know, we're going to go and have... I can't say it because he'll hear me, but you know, you know what I mean. And then he'll hear me say different stages of the day and he'll know where we are at with the day. And the other thing that I really like that for is at the weekends, I mean, he loves going off exploring other places. He loves it if we go out somewhere for the day at the weekend. He loves it. But what I'm able to do is very quickly bring him back into his routine. So supposing we've been out all morning and we get back at lunchtime, say, and I'm able to slot him back into his routine really easy just by saying to him, oh, it's lunchtime. Should we go and have lunch now? And he will know where we are in the day. So although I do that because he has learning difficulties and he definitely, definitely needs it, um, it actually benefits all of my dogs. So I'm going to show you now my routine that I did yesterday. Good morning. It's uh, six o'clock in the morning. We've just got up. So the first thing that I do is I feed my boys. So I've got a little Albert over here crying because he wants his breakfast. <laughs> So I better get on with it. So I feed them now. It's six o'clock. And then they have an hour to let that food go down while I go and get showered and ready. If you don't know about bloat, it's really important that you learn because bloat, it kills dogs. It's very, very dangerous. And having a gap between you feeding your dogs and you taking your dogs out for a walk or playing or any exercise um, is really, really important. If you don't know about it, I'm going to pop a video up at the end of the video so that you can learn about bloat. I better get on and feed these boys. Right, so it's about 10 past seven now and we're off having our walk. I walk them until about eight o'clock. It's not all walking because, you know, they're getting older now. So there's a lot of hanging about, watching the world go by, having a sit down. But they're out for about 50 minutes, an hour now. Right, so it's eight o'clock now, we're back from my walk. So I've just given them a teeth cleaner treat that they have when we get back. And then I brush them. I put cream on Albert's paws because he gets dry paws. 
Uh, I'll just check them over and make sure that you know they didn't get anything stuck in them from the walk. Um, and that takes about 10 minutes, something like that. So it's nine o'clock now, and they settle down now to sleep all the way through until lunchtime at 12 o'clock. And like I've said earlier, that is so good for me because I need to work now. So it means I can sit down and work. I need to not be disturbed. And they don't. They just sleep all the way through now. Completely don't disturb me at all. And they sleep straight through through to lunchtime. And that's because, well, they've had their good walk, so they're tired. But they've just got their bodies have just got used to it. And so naturally they're tired now and they want to settle down and they want to sleep. I know they are a bit older. So like Albert here is nine. So he's going to sleep more. My other two dogs are six, so they're not that old at all, really. Um, but they all settle down nicely now and sleep right through till lunchtime. So it's 12 o'clock now, so I'm going to have my lunch break for an hour. So it really depends on the weather. If the weather's nice, then we'll spend the whole hour out here and they'll just be sniffing around in the garden. But it's not a very nice day today. It's all cloudy and it's really cold. So they just come out here for a little bit, have a sniff around. They don't really hang around here too much this time of year, but they have an hour. So if they want to be, you know, in like I said, in the summer, they could be out here sunbathing. They have access to the garden all day, so they can be out in the garden whenever they want to be. But they tend to just stick to whatever I'm doing. And so sniffing around in the garden now for a while, having a sunbathe if the sun ever shines. Um, and um, like I said, so I have an hour lunch break. They can do it now if they want to. Right, so it's one o'clock now and um, I finished my lunch break and what happens now is they settle back down and they have another sleep. I've only really realised when I'm recording this how much they sleep. They do sleep a lot. Obviously, my dogs are getting on now. So um, Harry here and Humps, my other dog, they're both six. And my other little white dog you just saw, Albert, he's, he's nine. So they are getting older now. And so they are going to be a bit more settled than, say, a puppy. But they do settle down now and they sleep now until about two o'clock so I get about another hour of work done right so it's two o'clock now so what happens at two o'clock is I do some training with them good boy um I don't do training for an hour I do training for about sort of 15 minutes good boy humps um I've taught humps to ring the bell and then everybody gets a treat um, and I don't just do this kind of training with them. Um, other things that I do with them in this time is, so Humps here, the one in the middle, he, the one that's ringing the bell, he um, he is a rescue dog from Korea, from the meat trade. And so one of the things that he has a real big, big problem with is being groomed and um, he will bite people if they try to groom him. Luckily, he trusts me, he's never bitten me and he does trust me. So I'm the one who is attempting his grooming but even with me doing it, he still gets a bit worried. So what I do at this time of day is I do things like I'm getting him used to the scissors and the clippers and stuff like that. So he has to touch the clippers or the scissors or whatever. Good boy. And um, then he gets a treat. So in so from two to three is that kind of thing happens. Um, just anything I need to train on them with. I mean, if you watch my videos, you know I do a lot of work with them with... Um, to get them over their fear of fire or him over his fear of fireworks and I do all that kind of stuff now anything that needs sort of doing um in this time um I do that now so it's three o'clock now and little Albert here he just settles back down and has another sleep he's getting on now he's nearly 10 so he just has another little sleep now the other two dogs they tend to be more playful now so they play with their toys Sometimes they'll have a sleep, but they're more lively now. Um, and so they play with their toys and stuff like that now until um, four o'clock. Right, so it's four o'clock now. So that's dinner time. So they're eating their dinner. Um, what happens now between four o'clock and six o'clock? They just do their own thing because I get dinner. I do my housework. I get dinner ready um, for me and my husband. My husband comes in from work. And so that all happens in the next couple of hours. And so they just eat their dinner and then just mosey about doing their own thing. Right, it's six o'clock now, and they have, just before we settle down for the evening, they all, <coughs> all of them, oh, humps, they all get a biscuit. Not a human biscuit, it's a dog, you know, a dog biscuit, dog treat biscuit. Right, so after they've had their biscuit, then they brush their teeth. So my husband just, that's my husband's job, brushes the boy's teeth. 
at this time. And so this is, what time is it now? So six o'clock, yeah. So they just brush their teeth every night at this time. And all three of them do that. So now it's quarter past six and we are just going to settle down now um, and watch some TV for a couple of hours. I love this time of night. <laughs> just a lovely time just to sit down and relax with them. They are all tired by this point in the evening, so they all just fall fast asleep um, and get a lovely time to relax. Right, it's eight o'clock now and um, time to go to bed. So I go upstairs and I read now for an hour in bed and um, they all come with me. Well, not actually all of them. Humps, he sleeps downstairs on the sofa. He actually gets in my spot on the sofa and sleeps there all night. But he can come upstairs if he wants to. He chooses not to. But uh, my other two, they come up with us and get into bed. And so um, we go off to bed now. And that is them done until the morning. Good night.